Hello everyone and welcome to the Isolated Ape podcast. I hope you're keeping safe and well. So last week we had season two, uh, episode one, um, Dave, Chris and Steve. We had a right giggle and it's done really, really well in fairness. Um, what I have done is on all the podca- podcast providers, I've come back to just episode number 14 rather than season two, episode one. I think further down the line, it'll be a lot easier to track of how many I've done, things like that. So um, everywhere else where you get your podcast, it will pop up now as uh, episode number number 14 youtube will stay the same once it's published it's a lot harder to to edit um in other notes we are now available pretty much everywhere i use anchor as my host uh, for the podcast and that pushes it out then to apple podcast apps google spotify um, but i've added a lot more to it so there's breaker Castbox, overcast radio republic um player fm pocket cast soundcloud stitcher deezer and it's on youtube as well so it's pretty much available everywhere you can get your podcasts and like i said in the instagram post there the other day if you didn't see it if there's somewhere that you get your podcast i haven't got it available please let me know and i will end Endeavor to get that up there. Uh, on to episode number 15 this week. Uh, I've got a mate of mine, Richard Wilson. Again, a connection from the Lanzarote days. He's now a photographer who's doing really, really well for himself. Um, he's uh, doing the job that he loves to do. Uh, obviously not at the moment with the isolation, but um, you know he can't he can't wait to get back to it. He's a keen motorsport motorsport fan um, and is lucky enough and, and has worked hard enough to get him a position where he can uh, take photos of cars all the time and do what he loves. So. Um, um, he tells us a lot about the photos. There's a, a, a photo that you've probably seen in the newspapers, which is uh, it's got a royal seal of approval. We discussed that. Um, and also the, in the back, like how we got into how we got into photography in the first place. But also I, the, the bit that I liked about this story was, you know, we see these beautiful images and we see these beautiful photos, but there's a story behind it, how he got there and, and the position he had to take and, and how he got into those positions and things like that. So... Yeah, yeah, really nice story, really cool story. Now, if you're listening on your podcast provider, obviously you're not going to get any images. If you're watching on YouTube, he has kindly shared a lot of the images we discuss and other ones um, for me to pop up. And while we're discussing, they show up on screen so you can visualize what we're talking about. Um, also, if you like any of the images and you want to purchase them, or if you're, again, if you're on the podcast provider and you want to have a look at some of his images, please visit his Instagram page. It's uh, Richard Wilson Productions. So you'll find it Richard underscore Wilson underscore Productions. If there's anything there that catches your fancy and you want to buy it, hit him up directly and he'll, uh, he'll accommodate you. So, uh, yeah, really cool story. Uh, really enjoyed this one. He's a nice guy, lovely, lovely guy, and um, and, and got some real cool tells, tales to tell. So uh, I'll stop waffling and I'll let you get on with it. Enjoy the podcast. Thanks for your time. And we're off. There we go. Easy as that. So today I've got with me Richard Wilson. Rich, how are you, mate? I'm very well, mate. How are you? Long time no see. It's been a long, long time. I think the last time I... I'm very well. Um, I think the last time we spoke or the last time I saw you was probably in Lanzarote, which was I left in 2012. I left you... in 2011. Okay. Yeah. So that was the last time. And I, and I know we've obviously been in contact on social media and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I, let's just like we were just previously chatting before I press record and we were talking about what I do for a living and do I love it. And I was saying I it, it does everything that it needs to do for me. Um, do I love it? Do I enjoy it? I mean, it's all right. I've had worse jobs. Don't get me wrong. Um, but do I love it? No. And then you asked me what I'd like to do. And I was telling you that I'm enjoying what I'm doing with this podcast. Don't know how I can monetize it. That was pretty much a recap of where we'd got. And I thought, why are we wasting this? Let, let's chat live because this is some of the things I want to talk to you about, mate, because okay. I know that you've, you've in our time in Lanzarote, we all worked in the bar trade. That's what we did. PR in bar work, you know, getting pissed and having fun. Right. And then, you you went home and did you have a normal nine to five before what you're doing now or? yeah so um kind of how do you put it you, you go from that kind of bar work lifestyle where it's kind of 8 p.m till 4 a.m um and, and it's never never land mate and you never exactly, grow up exactly mm. and uh i think it was time just to come home and 
Um, at, at that time, obviously, with like the economic crash and stuff like that in full swing in Spain, it was very limited to get a, let's call it a proper job um, yeah. over there. So it was just time to come home and, and, and kind of start from scratch again and, and, and build, my, build myself up. And I started out, um, I've always had like a, a digital background. Um, so I started out doing kind of e-commerce for a very small clothing chain. Um, which again, set me on nine to five, uh, Monday to Friday, paid the bills. Um, and, uh, yeah, just, just kind of finding my own feet from there and, and adjusting to, uh, normal life, shall I say, um, rather yeah, than yeah, just yeah. Uh, going out and, and living for evenings and, uh, drinking my own body weight in alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which we did. Oh, we did a lot God. of, yeah, um, we did. Yeah, it was good fun. Yeah. It was good fun, yeah, yeah. My body was happy when I gave it a break there for a while. When I moved away, the body was like, "Ah, oh, thank you, thank yeah. you, I needed that." <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was uh, it, it was good times, and um, and how like photography. So obviously, I know uh, to tell the listeners, you uh, uh, professional photographer now. Yeah, is, that, is, I, is that your full time job now, mate? Yeah, I, I, I class that as my full time job. Well, it is my full time job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, professional is a bit of a a strong word i've always i've always just kind of tried to keep my feet on the ground and uh I, it's just it, the best way to describe it is it's just a hobby that's gone out of control um and uh you know it's it's something that companies and and individuals are willing to pay me for which is great and uh you know i i enjoy every second every day is a new challenge and um and uh, yeah i just like like creating I don't know, images that tell a story. That's the best way to put it. I don't, like, obviously they can't see this, but I'm actually sat here grinning, the biggest smile on my face from here to it. I love hearing people find their passion and be able to make a living out of it, you know? And, you know, whether it, no one, what you'll generally find is when people find their passion and, and find their, their way of monetizing it and making a few quid out of it, they're not really in it uh, in the beginning for the money and then it, it's the passion that snowballs into earning enough money that it can become your full-time work, right? I yeah, assume. it was, it was, um, it, 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 t- how I started out was I, um, I, won- I think it was 2013, I got a rebate from the tax man. Um, and um, I bought tickets to go to the British Grand Prix. And I thought, right, well, I've only got my iPhone. So I thought, um, you know, I, I need something all right to take some pictures. And I bought this tiny little, I think it was a Samsung NX1000 camera and it had like interchangeable lenses and stuff like that. And I thought, all right, I'll buy a couple of lenses with it. And and it it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, and again, me, I am zero knowledge when it comes to cameras, technology, photography. So as, as the layman here now, and as you know, it, is that uh was it a kind of a good camera but for a good amateur camera or was it it wasn't the thing that you go down to you know that i've got in my cupboard there do you know what i mean <laughs> it was it was a good point and shoot um as what i call it obviously you can switch it on and click away to your heart's content but it also had enough um settings and um accessories you can use to to improve your own learning base um so I, I i took that with me and some of the well quite a lot of the images were absolutely shocking to be fair obviously you know you you out of all the good pictures i've taken there's probably a hundred thousand bad pictures um yeah. just from just from learning and uh you know the ones that came out okay you know kind of nothing to, to what happens now but the ones that came out okay really intrigued me and it was like right how do i take get more, more of them like that yeah yeah it was because <laughs> yeah. it was just like right i'm really pleased with those or i could work with those or you know obviously learn from those so and it was at just... that stage there rich could i ask did you have like so again i had a mate of mine who's a who's an amateur photographer that that goes traveling a lot with his work and and, and in his leisure and manages to take snaps you know and he's he's and he was talking composition and lighting and this and that meant nothing to me right you obviously know everything you know what he means but did you have any knowledge of that at that stage or were you very much just going and taking snaps um i had a good base knowledge but i i to, and where was that learned was that just learned because you enjoyed it or was it something you did at college was it um, something was it something you studied for or my, my dad used to do a bit of photography he was an amateur uh obviously he but he uh I love him to bits, but he was kind of all the gear, no idea type thing um, and bought really nice cameras and lenses and stuff. And he used to teach me how to 
do it and it was it, it became very apparent that I could probably do it better than dad um which <laughs> which is uh, a, an interesting um kind of way to look at stuff but um yeah it it it, it just became trial and error so you take a, you, know, you take a picture and and the beauty with digital photography is obviously you can review it straight away so as soon as you've taken the picture you can look at it and say right i don't like x y and z what settings do i need to change currently to make that either sharper ble- better make the composition better etc and then you take the next shot and then you know and again it's right that's better right how do i improve that further improve that again yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, cool. okay. whereas obviously with film obviously it was developed you had 26 shots and yeah, you had to wait a week to get them back and yeah, you used yeah, to get those yeah, little yeah. stickers on your photograph saying it was either underexposed or overexposed and you'd be like oh shit right yeah yeah yeah. i get it now okay so sorry go over. so 2013 you went to the grand prix yeah so um i did that and um so that's obviously a big passion of yours because i can see from from the photos that you take so again for i'm i'm probably assuming that people have seen the scene seen the same images that i see on your social media feeds which they potentially haven't but um you know grand prix cars motorsport um is quite a big part of your portfolio right yeah when when, when i was a kid um i've always been a fan of formula one um you know michael schumacher was my my racing sporting hero and uh mum and dad used to buy like christmas and birthdays they used to buy like these really nice books with incredible photography in it and i used to sit there and just think god i'd I'd love just to get that close one time just to 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 try and emulate people like mark sutton uh gareth hereford um darren uh darren heath um you know and and a plethora of others where it's all it's not a photograph anymore it's turned into art um and that's that's kind of what my ambition is and and you know i'm I'm striving forward and and still kind of making gains and i feel like i've i've done a lot but haven't done um half as much as i'm intending on doing wow yeah because you've done you know from and again pictures speak a thousand words and they tell a story right and and when we look at the photos and how close you are getting to these you know formula one drivers and and you're in the pit lanes it seems and you you know and and right up close and obviously the famous photo i'll call it in and the one that's um you know probably been more successful for you was the uh the the lewis hamilton one right yeah explain how you managed to get that or or, and and again let's big it up and tell it what it is so it got voted for or it got nominated for the british photo of the year award yeah yeah uh for the sporting category the british photography awards that happened in uh when did it happen february um that happened and uh yeah that 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 photograph was um i don't know just just i'm I'm not going to call it luck because it I, I did think about the photograph before i'd actually taken it and i set myself up in a position where nobody else could get in front of me because you know lewis hamilton when he's at the british grand prix everybody wants a piece of him and um obviously i was blessed with having the full fia accreditation so i was able to stand in the pit lane do what i need to do and uh you know kind of clicked on my heart's content anyway and i knew he had this commemorative helmet with the union jack on top of his his helmet because he always likes to to uh to mark the occasion with something unique and over the kind of two three practice sessions i kept noticing every time he he got into his car he always looked down and it wasn't necessarily just to show his helmet it was obviously looking down to see where he's putting his feet and making sure he's not stepping on anything etc so I, I kind of took the decision and before it even walked into the garage, I sat plumb center at the nose of his car. And I thought, right, yeah, yeah. I've, I've got this thing about, I like my pictures to be balanced. Um, you know, and if you look through them, there's quite, a, I'm not going to say a symmetry, but it, it, it just yeah, sits I know, nicely. Yeah, the first photo that I saw of you that really stood out, boom, and I was like, wow. And you were, I think you're in Yorkshire, yeah, yes. is that right? yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and I remember you, I remember 
you're taking a, fo- a lot of kind of countryside photos and it was the swan going down the lake and the sun was on it. It seemed to be like you know, the sun set and the swan was coming up and, uh, and it, yeah. was right in the se- it was right in the centre and, and the ripples were all rippling out. Again, kind of a lot of symmetry there, obviously natural symmetry, but that photo was the first one and I was like, he's getting somewhere here now. He, <laughs> he, this is going to be him now, mate. He's going to be flying, you know? Um, but yeah, I noticed the kind of symmetry in that. It is something that you, you, you do seem to have yeah yeah and it, but anyway it, sorry for interrupting carry on no, no, it's fine, don't <laughs> worry um yeah so so um i sat plumbing plumb center in front of the nose of his car and basically waited for him to come into the garage now when um one thing i did learn is is formula one's known as the piranha club just because it's it's kind of everyone's after the same thing and everybody wants to get the let's call it the exclusive or, or whatever they want to call it and um yeah, so as, as as he started to come into the garage, all these photographers started gathering around. And because I was basically sat down looking up at his car, all the other photographers shot him at kind of eye level. So that it was just, as you stood up, straight straight across, like parallel to, to how he stood. Um, and literally, you know, th- those moments you have split seconds to, to compose yourself, obviously get the right settings. You've only got one opportunity for it, etc. And I just clicked away, and um, you know I, I haven't shown anybody the the outtakes of of that. Um, <laughs> but to be fair, they, you know they, they're all they're all very similar. Compositions. Yeah, that it's, was just it, the best one. Is at different height levels, and and that one just just seemed to work. Um, and I remember when I took the picture, I met a friend of mine, um, Phil, in the uh, kind of a bar afterwards. And we had a chat, and I, sh- I showed him this picture at the back of the camera, and he went, "Mate, when when that's all done, can I have a picture? Can I have a, a print of that?" And I thought, "Well, yeah, go on then, you can have one." You know, I didn't really think anything of it. Um, the next morning, I posted that picture on social media, and I just put Lewis Hamilton climbing into his car at Silverstone for qualifying, done, and it went mental. Everyone was just like, great shot, one of the best pictures you've seen, can I have a print of that? And I thought, oh, actually, there might be some legs in this. Um, and again, obviously, completed the weekend, you know, one of the best weekends of my life. And then I – got... sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, and then did it eventually you got the royal seal of approval, right? Yeah, so I had uh, – at the time, I had an Etsy shop where I just sold prints, like just of anything that I'd taken. And, it, you know, it did all right. And – when I announced that that picture was going to go into production, I sold probably a hundred of them. Now, bearing in mind, usually the prints that I'd sell, they'd sell one, two, maybe three. Um, and, you know, it was, it, I was happy with that. Um, so as soon as I put that on and a hundred had gone straight away, I was like, oh, right, okay then. Um, and then, yeah, I got a, a, a random email from a random account um, basically asking if uh, if they could have a bespoke print of the of the Lewis Hamilton picture. So I thought it was a bit of a wind-up, to be honest with you. And, uh, you know, because this account had no um, no pictures, no followers, no posts, anything. It had this really random name. And I thought, yeah, whatever, that's, that's not a problem. And I kind of just went along with it. And uh, they asked if they could have number one because it was a limited run. And... Uh, I I I I turned around the first time and said, "Look, I want to keep number one. You know, that's a, it's a special one for me." And uh, they said, "How much would you charge if we want a number one?" So I just I, I I picked a figure out of thin air, to be honest with you. I knew what it had cost to to print and manufacture and and stuff like that. And uh, they agreed, and I was like, "Right, it's still a bit of a wind up this, so I'm not going to think anything of it." And then I asked where it was going to be shipped to. And uh, the business said, look, can you sign a, a non-disclosure agreement um, and you know, promise that this is going to be number one, it's going to be hand-signed, it's going to be shipped. And I was like, yeah, that's fine, not a problem. Um, and then they sent this uh, NDA through with the uh, recipients of it and I was like, shit, right, okay. Um, <laughs> right, I guess best, <laughs> I best that's to start taking this one a little bit more seriously. And uh, yeah, and then it arrived at my house and uh, I was blown away. To be honest with you, we, we, this thing was seventy centimeters wide, a meter ten high. You know, it, it looked, yeah. and it was it was on this really nice aluminium finish with a a wooden float. And I was like, oh Christ, I really want to keep this now. Um, anyway, I, I, again, I posted a picture on on online about it, and then 
OK magazine got in touch with me. I was like, OK, or hello, one of them. And uh, they basically said, oh, a, a source close to to, uh, to the royal family said that this is their picture. And I was like, well, I can't confirm or deny it. And they asked me a load of questions and uh, I answered them as vaguely and as honestly as I could uh, due to agreements and stuff. And, um, yeah, they, they published a the story and it just it went nuts. I remember waking up the next morning and looking at the the Etsy account and just thinking, yeah, today's a good day. Definitely today a good is day. a good day. Yeah. And uh yeah, it just gained loads of traction from there and um, you know, it's it's received lots of accolades and nice comments and um, you know, it's it's sold a fair few, so I can't complain. Happy days, mate. Yeah. Happy days. I lost you there slightly and I know in the recording it'll be grand. Did you mention who bought it? Are you still not allowed? Uh, if people, I'm not allowed to, but if people look it up, yeah. they'll be able to find it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm glad I didn't say it anyway now because <laughs> I thought I didn't realise, like, because I've seen it on social media and yeah, I yeah. know who's got it yeah. and you didn't tell me who's got it. Um, I'm glad I didn't bloody just spit that out there then now. Yeah, so go and, do you know what I'm going to do? For the, for each of the episodes, I've got a picture of the person. Can I, can I have the picture? I've got a picture of you holding that photo yeah of course yeah 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 it's not we can I'll, use that yeah i'll email it over to you i've got i, t I took a snapshot from your, uh, <laughs> from, from, from your instagram mate plagiarized it didn't give a shit um yeah I'm, I'm as amateur as it comes mate yeah and if if you come after me i'm in trouble but no, yeah, we'll, right, we'll, worry, we'll, we'll take it yeah um but yeah send it over it'd be even better quality. it'll be a better quality anyway um but yeah no so anyone who doesn't know um have a look at the picture on the episode you'll see the photo i'm sure then you can uh google yeah. Which member of the royal family bought it? Yeah. They're the cool ones. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, cool, man. And then you do a lot of, I see, uh, and again, going back to the photography and, and what I, I see on your social medias and stuff, um, you love Italy, do you? Yeah. It's, uh, I think one thing that became apparent to me, obviously, following the Grand Prix and stuff like that is, and as much as I love the sport, Silverstone as a event is great, as a cost exercise is extortionate. Um, you know, it's really expensive. It's the tickets are probably in out of the twenty races that go on, it's probably in the top three or four price wise. Um, you know, and it, it's great, don't get me wrong, but considering, you know, British summers, you can't guarantee the weather, you can't guarantee um, you know, kind of what you imagine a great event to be um i very quickly cottoned on to uh and it was it was basically by chance that um we ended up going to the italian grand prix in 2009 i think it was that was the first year i ever went and uh, a friend got made redundant and you know he's, he's been really really good friend and uh he, he was made redundant and for christmas me and my brother we uh we coined together just to get him a ticket to go to the Italian Grand Prix one year and, and we said we'd go with him because he's a massive Ferrari fan. I'm a big Ferrari fan, so it was like, right, it was kind of the whole holy ground of motorsport if you're a Ferrari fan. And, um, yeah, we went in 2009 and realised how cheap it is to, to, to spend the weekend there to, you know, kind of camp or pay for a hotel or whatever. And just have a, a good time and, and have better weather and, and just enjoy it more. And uh, ever since 2009, we've been every single year. And um, it's it, as, as we've carried on going, we've discovered new places. Obviously, um, we've, met, we've met people that we've stayed friends with and uh, kind of carried, you know, just carried on those relationships from there. And every single year, it just seems to get a little bit better. You know, you, you go out with um your friends there and their families and they invite you in you know italy has hospitality like no other um you know it's it's very family orientated it's very cultured it's very um look after each other kind of treat people how you expect to be treated kind of thing and i i, I just cottoned onto it straight away and i just thought god this is nice yeah i, I get why italy is such a draw to so many people and then you look at the landscape and the, the, the kind of architecture and the, the character of the place. And it's just a photographer's dream, to be honest with you. Yeah, and uh, yeah. every, every street tells a story. And uh, yeah, I, I just love going back. I call it home from home. Um, I'll probably retire there one day, touch wood. 
Um, Happy days. And, Happy uh, days. Yeah, I, I look forward to going back later on this year once all this crap's blown over. Yeah, 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 eventually. Yeah. Yeah, and um, uh, you've been to Venice and took a photo for... Tell us that story there now, because that you didn't just go to Venice to take photos, you went to Venice to take a photo. Yeah, <laughs> it so seems. I've got these things where, uh, you know, everyone's got the bucket list or everybody's got things that they really want to do. And whether that's buy a nice car or buy a watch or, I don't know, go on holiday to a dream location, whatever. And I... I uh, I have these things where it's just like I, I try and litter my house with pictures that I've taken of memorable moments that I've just wanted to do. And one of them was um, Sunrise in Venice. And uh, again, really fortunate to have a friend that I, I stay with um, when I go to Italy in, on Lake Como. And uh, basically I'd, I'd hired a car and just decided, right, weather's going to be good tomorrow. Venice is three hours away and then looked at the time that sunrise was and it was like 4 30 so i went to bed i think at about 6 p.m um to wake up at 12 to set off for 1 a.m to get to venice for 3 3 30 um and basically I, I just planned everything so it was like right i knew exactly where the sun was going to rise i knew the route that i needed to take to get to like the grand canal um and I knew where I was going to park. I knew how long the walk was going to be and, and stuff like that, just to make sure I was there at the the, the key point. Um, yeah, because, again, driving three hours to miss sunrise, I, I think I would have kicked myself. Um, and, uh, yeah, just literally I parked up, ran pretty much the full length of Venice just to, to make this spot and then just sat patiently and waited and the sun came up. And, uh, yeah, and it, it was lovely to have... It's probably like what Venice is right now. It was lovely to have Venice completely empty, you know, where all you could hear was the ripples of water on each canal, and you just be like, oh, this is. I, I, again, I get why people love Venice. Um, yeah, yeah. And then uh, once I took my picture, it started to get busier, so I uh, I left at seven a.m. and uh, I drove to Verona after that, and had a after afternoon in Verona. Mad, madness, madness, wow. and. Um... Apart from Formula One, and uh, you know, you seem you take photos with plenty of other cars as well that are not Formula One cars, right? Is that something? How did you manage to get into that, and how did that work for you? Um, I think just building a network. To be honest with you, it was I. I've never been afraid to email people or ask people if I can do something because my mentality is essentially if I ask and say no, I don't have it, and I never had it. So I haven't lost anything by asking. Um, I've only got something to gain by, you know, asking. Don't get me wrong. There is a way of asking. You can't just go, I want to do this. Let me do it. It's um, everybody wins from it, essentially. You know, obviously, I can take a nice image. You get to keep the image. Um, and when I first started doing photography and stuff, it was you do a lot of stuff for free, you know, a lot of stuff. And and that's where kind of the challenges have, have arisen was, you know, you – it's that trade-off, isn't it, between earning money and getting exposure. Now, you can't get exposure without getting experience, and sometimes experience has to come for free. Um, yeah. So I um, I did a shoot with uh, a couple of friends, and uh, I organized it and, and uh, took some photographs. Anyway, a, a local prestigious um, car dealer, um, their manager liked the image. And I just sent a message and, and just said, look, you know, I'd, I'd love to do more. Would you be interested in me helping out? Um, you know, I, 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 I don't mind doing it. And, you know, we can do a trial shoot first and see if you like the images. Um, and uh, he very kindly replied back. He goes, yeah, sounds great. Let's give it a whirl. And uh, I told him my idea and we took a Ferrari 458 Spider into the center of York at 4 a.m. I think it was Christmas. Um, so, like, all the lights were on and stuff like that. Anyway, we took took some really nice images, and uh, I think that that's where it kicked off. And then all of a sudden, it was look, we'd we'd like you to come in three days a week, and um, you know we'll we'll put we'll we'll let you drive them. Obviously, you seem to be a safe driver, so you can take them to wherever you need to be, and you, you know as long as you can shoot them and manage the social media side of things. Um, that's what I did, and you know they saw a a increase in engagement and inquiries and stuff like that, and I just thought. Well, actually, this this is quite cool. You know, obviously, I'm, I'm in it. Yeah, 
more importantly, weren't my car. So, you know, you could yeah. um, not worry about the running costs and things like that. Or, no, don't get me wrong. So yeah. You just get into drive these beautiful cars to locations, take snaps of them, go back, post it up, yeah. and benefiting from it. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Um, you know, and... Uh, the, 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 <laughs> beautiful. Yeah, these cars are just something that... I, I'd love to aspire to own one, but you know, I've always decided. Yeah, you know, I've always kind of declared I'll never be the richest photographer in the world. But you know, it's one of those things. As long as I'm happy, then you know, jobs are good. Yeah, 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 yeah. madness. Um, and and again, do you know, you, you're getting the benefits of it, and without having to own it, and and again, I noticed that the a lot of the, the kind of the phrases and the taglines. I don't even know what you call them. The the kind of you know the the, the bit on the the description i suppose of the photo or, or what you're very good at that as well is that taking a lot of work because that's a different that's english writing and, and being good with words rather than just being good with images is that something that you've always had a had a knack for and um, i suppose it helps if you're doing it then looking after social media for for these kind of people that you need that as well you know i don't know it's it's i've always described my photography as like the um I don't know, like the, the emotional outlet that I use when I can't sometimes put it into words. Um, now, if I posted a picture of Venice or a Porsche or whatever and just put, this is a Porsche GT3, it's like, <laughs> well, yeah, no shit, Sherlock. Like, I think most car fans will know that. Um, so I just try and put what I think um, rather than describe what the image is it's just more yeah, yeah, yeah. this is the train of thought i had when i was taking it um yeah, 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 yeah. you know because then when, when i look back at it it's like the venice one you know i put you know it's really nice to be able to relive moments forever from a split second um and you know that that's i have this thing where images are like music and smells if you hear a piece of music or you smell I don't know, somebody's perfume or a certain food or, I don't know, petrol, whatever. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. It takes you back to a certain point. And 100%, yeah. Photography music, for me, music is my thing for that. If I hear a song, I'm like, I'm in where I first heard that song or where, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, I get that. Whereas with photography, every single picture that I take or, or look back at, I go, oh, I remember that. And I remember what the weather was like, what who I met or where I went or what the smell was or it, it just brings back more than just looking at a picture. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, yes. So I think that's, that's, and again, that's that's the same with the captions. It's, I just remember what I was thinking at certain points. Obviously with the with the COVID-19 stuff, when I was asked to go shoot this this GT3, it, it, it was something I hadn't done for about three weeks. And, you know, uh, with photography, I love going out every day and just trying to, make something out of nothing um essentially and it was just nice to to reignite that passion again and, and that desire to carry on doing what i'm doing um and yeah i think it's taught a lot of people this this whole situation where you miss what you took for granted um, yeah 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 and definitely. uh you know I, I i've taken for granted the ability just to to go out and use my camera and you know i vow yeah, once once all this blows over, to just to grab the ball by the horns and and take every opportunity that I can. Fair play, man. Yeah, I think a lot of people will be doing that. Um, and I think again, the reason I wanted to speak to you is because you've been through the experience of taking risks and having to take a risk and take a punt to go and you know, uh, to to make your life not a life where it it doesn't seem like you have a job. Do you know what I mean? In the nicest yeah. possible yeah, way, yeah. like it, it, you love what you do, so you're going to do what you enjoy, and you're getting paid for it. You know, and that's I think I think we'd all love to do that. It's something I'm trying to drill into my kids. You know, find your passion, do that, and if you can make money out of it, you don't have to be rich. You'll you'll be rich in life. You don't have to yeah. be rich in money. You know, um, do you? What advice would you give to people? What kind of you know, not necessarily just for photography, but in general of how to go about going from working a nine to if someone for, like me for example right i i have a job it pays me well it looks after my family in terms of healthcare and things like that it's a lot of risk for me to give that up right i understand that and my missus would be like yeah mate have a think about that you know um but at the same time kind of how do you how did you figure out how to monetize these kind of things and because you know there's many ways i suppose and and things like that i don't want to know figures and i don't want to know anything like that but just in terms of how how you went about it so obviously for yourself you you found 
a site that could print your photos onto certain things and sell them through that way. And, you know, you, you, what you, you got in contact with this guy from the car dealership and that kind of spiraled into some sort of income and things like that. So is there any other tips and things that you would advise um, me for this podcast, for example, yeah, how do yeah. I monetize this? How do I get this going? Uh, first of all, like I said before, it's, it's never be afraid to ask if you don't have it, you don't have it already. So you haven't lost anything. And that's a mentality I've taken all the way through. Now, I've been very fortunate enough to be presented with opportunities um, through just, I don't know, it, it, without blowing smoke up my own ass, just be nice. You know, it, yeah, 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 yeah. You, don't, you don't have to be cutthroat or backstabbing or, or any of these things to get ahead. You know, um, granted, it's, it might work for some people. What you know, it's, I, and I, I'll I'll always admit there are some people out there that are technically a million miles better than I am. But if you have no people skills and you are willing to put yourself out there and talk to the right people and go to the right events, essentially at your own expense, you you're always waiting. And, and it's one of these pet peeves for me where social media has been great for me right and and you know i try to use it in the right way i try to keep my personal life off it as much as i humanly can um and try and focus on work and it's worked um really really well like more more than probably any other outlet but it's social media's now just got to the stage where everybody's expecting everything for nothing um you know and i have a number of photographers or I say photographers kids essentially that that want to do um everything straight away they they just think they go from zero to a hundred in a day whereas it took me well it took me from 2013 to last year so what six years to get a full media accreditation now not a lot of people know this obviously and and I don't mind telling it it's it's because it is what it is, but for the Silverstone Grand Prix, I didn't earn other than the the prints that sold afterwards. But I never got paid for that. I, I a company got in touch with me and said, "Look, we can't afford to pay you, even though it's a well-established company. Don't get me wrong, can't afford to pay you, but we'll give you the the accreditation." And at that time, I couldn't. Um, you know, it, it was one of these where it was just like, right, do I? go for the experience something that i've always longed for what I've, I've i've driven myself and pushed myself to achieve for no money or do i hold out and try and get paid for it and i just thought you know what mate take the pump just go for it um and even then you know again not a lot of people know this bit and uh, it, it just shows the i don't know the dedication you've got to put into it i slept in my car for four days during that event because hotels were extortionate, all the campsites were full. Um, yeah, yeah. So I took a sleeping bag, slept in my car. I got a shower every morning in the uh, in the media center at Silverstone, um, and I am. That's just the amount of dedication that it takes to to sometimes achieve what you want to do. You have to go through these 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 points where you just go, you know what? I'm just going to do it. Just. But look at the photo you got there and look at the exposure you got from that. Do you know what I mean? It, and if you it, hadn't have taken that punt, you'd as you know, you'd still be probably in that same position, not in the position you are now, which I assume after, you know, that one not that one photo, but the amount of eyes that have come on to you and your photography from that one photo. Um, you know, imagine you didn't take that punt. Yeah, yeah, and that, that you know, somebody summed it up, um my, my friend um Gareth when when uh when we went through the images and he basically just turned around and said, look, imagine if you were sat there waiting for that photograph and your battery died or your memory card was full or your camera broke or oh, it, it, it's just one of those split second things where, you know, you, you, you take a chance in life. And I think it's, it's one of those things, if you're willing to take a chance, you get rewarded tenfold. Um, but you've, you've got to show the dedication and the grit and the determination to, to want to do those things for no money. Um, and you know, one one of the best books I ever read was um, a, a book called The Alchemist, and it's a, a story about a a sheep sheep farmer who basically just goes on this journey. But it's it's more about the I don't know the the esoterical message behind it, where if you want something bad enough, 
the the let's call it the the universe or whatever you want to call it moves out of your way to ensure that you get it and you know you have to take risks in life and granted it's a calculated risk it wasn't it was it wasn't a death defying risk it was just more you're going to spend quite a lot of money because Silverstone is expensive, you know, to eat, to, to, to drink, to, to, to whatever. You're going to have to spend money to get the experience. And I got the experience and it, it, it's, it's rewarded me tenfold, um, yeah. you know, by, by making that sacrifice because that's what, I re- again, from being a kid, having those Formula One books with those great images in, that's what I always long for. And, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, that, yeah. that was a huge moment in my life to to go christ i'm I'm one step closer to to making it and you know i'd love to do it full time I, I really would i'd love to get the opportunity again but if i was to get hit by a bus tomorrow touch what i don't um i would be pleased with with what i've achieved so far no doubt and you're saying you'd like to go full time what do you mean do you know what what do you mean by that now sorry um, Are I'd you love to do Formula One full time? So, right, kind of tra- travel the world. Um, you know, kind of work for either for a media outlet, an agency, or or whoever, or you know, for for Formula One itself or a team. Um, because that's that's what I love. I love the buzz about it. I love the um, the imagery you can get out of it, and the, and the different angles you can play with, and the the lighting, and and everything from that side of things. Um, you know, and, and again, it's it's a passion of mine, and and you know, I, I I'll never ever forget that that weekend, and just that that feeling of, um, I don't know, just just opportunity, and how lucky I was to 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 have that opportunity, and uh, kind of, I want that again. Yeah, 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 yeah. And again, kind of, we were talking about this side of things in terms of the podcast like i i'm doing this because i enjoy doing it i enjoy doing this because i've been wanting to do it for a while and put it out there and i didn't i don't expect any money from it uh, who knows when isolation finishes is it something that i'll continue on do you know what i mean life might go back to the norm and and you crack on but I, I can't foresee me not doing it now i've been in contact with so many people that i've not spoke to this is episode number i think when you had like season two started so episode 14 or something in total you know that's 14 they out of that 14 people i'd say there's only five of them that i would speak to regularly and the others are people that i've not spoken to in ages so for that alone it's been great and i think for me now i need to kind of branch out and and speak to people that i don't necessarily know as well you know and start doing that get i've had plenty of people that know so i know this fella he'd be great for it i know this fella he'd be great for it. i know this lady should be great for it so um, i think that that's the route i might start start tapping but again like you say just asking um there was a guy a rapper that i'm a big fan of who uh wanted to do a music video um obviously he's locked on isolation and can't do a music video that he had planned to do. So he just got fans to send in snippets and clips of them going along with the song. And, and it was put together and released the other day. You know, I sent in a photo of me and my little fella as part of it and it's in the video. So it's oh, classic. Cool. Check it out. Yeah. Luna C L U N A R uh, hyphen or, or no hyphen, just space C Luna C is the rapper and the song's called Wowzers. He's a lad from Bradford actually. Um, but he's, uh, he's a, well-respected rapper globally you know he's um cool yeah he was a battle rapper um and then kind of he, he he killed the battle rapping scene and smashed it and then he, now he's doing albums and he's very very good he's young enough he's 29 i think he is um around that age around 30 years old um but yeah he, I, I, we're in the video but i'm i'm just gonna ask him what yeah. have we got to lose do you know exactly. what I mean? just ask exactly. him ask him nicely and <laughs> i think i think the great thing about your podcast how you know kind of having followed season one is you you're not just talking about i don't know uh, run-of-the-mill subjects you know you're you're trying to teach people about kind of life lessons and you know kind of what what it takes to to get where you want to be and who you want to be and do what you want to do and and i think the more uh, relevant content you put out there um you know you can then start spreading your your network further afield and asking more and more people to get involved and when when people see that side of things in terms of what you're trying to put out there it's not just a let's call it a publicity stunt it's it's worthwhile meaningful subjects more and more people are cotton onto it and more people say yes because they feel like they're adding value to to what your podcast and what your audience are gaining 
Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And that's the thing, isn't it? That's, and, and thanks for that, because that's the kind of where I'm trying to get to. It started off as, let's have a chat, because there's plenty of people that are sat doing nothing, and I'm sat doing nothing. That's literally, let's have a chat and put it out there and have a bit of crack. Um, and then I started finding people that, you know, were in weird situations because of this COVID-19. So let's have a chat with them. And then I just wanted it to develop, and that's the route I wanted to go down. I, I do see that there's going to be a lot of people that are either going to be out of work. I think the world is going to change immensely after this pandemic has come to an end i think you know the way the world will be and the way we operate from an economic from a business point of view from a, a, a social point of view i think is going to change immensely um i can't imagine we're just going to flow back in after you know, like i look at my kids my I'm, I'm terrified my kids like when they when i ask them to go back to school they're not just going to run in and hug their friends are they they've just been told for the last four months don't touch anyone don't go near anyone so there's then kind of so i do think there's going to be a huge change in in things and i think people need to realize that you don't always have to potentially work for the man or do the you, there's things that you can do for yourself and and what's important and i think i'm gonna you know this and that becomes family side of things and um, I've loved the amount of time that I've had with my family not being in the office. You know, the, the 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 20 minutes at the coffee machine in the kitchen having a chat around the coffee machine is now downstairs chatting to my family. Do you know what I mean? So um, the, not just for people to – I don't want this podcast to turn to people just, you know, who have managed to do things for themselves, trying to tell everyone to do something for themselves. But in like you say, in general, just giving people advice and ideas and, and – opinions and thoughts to maybe go alongside their own you know and, and broaden their minds a bit so yes yeah, it's, we'll it's it goes, make, man. If, if you if you can inspire even one person you've done you've done your job and you know i i, I think it goes without saying i think that the subject matters that you're talking about and um kind of the the lessons that you you're trying to invoke into people and the and the, the meaning of of what you're trying to put across um is inspiring more than than just me um you know so you're doing a great job and um you know if i if i can help in any way shape or form whether it be contacts whether it be anything like that obviously just just let me know i'm always happy to help mate and uh you know because end of the day i was in your situation you know i i i needed help from people um and you know if if you're a nice enough guy and and, and personable and you are i don't know willing to Give and take, you know, it, it's it's never a one-sided thing. You know, it's, um, you know, people have to see the benefit in it. And if if they gain something from it and you gain something from it, then it, it's a mutual respect and everybody moves forward. And, you know, so I, I've asked loads of people for advice and, and I've been very fortunate that people have given me good advice and pointed me in the right direction without giving me the work. Um, you know, it's it's you still have to go out there and get it. And I think that's that's one thing that social media is not really showing is you, you see all these influencers and things like that 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 have granted they work hard, but um, the, there's a, a, a guy um, Stephen Stephen Bartlett. Do you know him? He's the, the social media fellow. He's the where's the hat? Is that yeah, right? Social chain. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, that's it. Yeah, yeah. He, he he. There was something that really really stuck with me, and it was you know hard work alone doesn't get you where you want to be your your hard work your determination everything has to be met with a sprinkling of luck and an opportunity and only when your your talent and your, your determination is met with an opportunity do you actually thrive you know and all these kids are uh, granted are working hard but not necessarily at the right things um you know you you still have to work on a network you have to um you know hone your craft learn new skills you can't just think that's it and and ask people and and expect it for nothing you 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 have to sacrifice something you have to to really really want it to be met with an opportunity that you're able to thrive on um yeah, yeah. you know and that that's something that's really really stuck with me um yeah. and you know and, and forever will do now i think once it's in there it's 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 not leaving yeah yeah i'd agree i'd agree he's uh yeah and yeah stephen bartlett you said his name and I, the first thing i thought of was the hat so stephen bartlett the hat's working mate <laughs> <laughs> yeah keep wearing hats mate yeah i mean do you know the hat i'm sorry he always seems to wear a, a black hat with a huge kind of rim around it yeah it reminds so, me of pharrell yes yeah. yes yes yeah 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 that's it and i think a lot of the, I, I read somewhere as well if you've got a good silhouette You'll always stand out. Oh, and, if you think of all the big, true, then I've got a huge, yeah. I've got a huge underbite. So it's like if you yeah. put if you put me sideways, I look like Desperate Dan. 
but I mean, he, <laughs> but even like you know, you know, if you're they, Amy Winehouse and Jimi Hendrix and Bob Marley and all these people, you just see their silhouette, you know exactly who it is. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so Stephen Bartley, you got a good silhouette, mate. <laughs> well, uh, listen, we'll wrap it up there, Richard. We've we've had forty five minutes, mate. It's been an absolute pleasure. You did um, thank you very much for asking me. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, you know, hope, no, I will. hope you know again, your podcast has inspired me. So I hope I hope this, I don't know, advice goes somewhere to inspire somebody else. And I think uh, it, yeah, I, it certainly will, mate. It certainly will. Um, I think as like uh, so, I started putting things up to YouTube the other day. So I've got the first three or four, I think, up onto YouTube now. The first three or four episodes. So with that, I'm literally just using the logo from the Isolated 8 podcast, the image of the person and then audio in the background and just kind of chopping and changing them. But I can bring a couple of titles up and little links here and add more in. Again, like you say, it's it's learning. I've, I've only learned how to do this. I downloaded some movie maker the other day. I'm absolutely bluffing it. I'm sure it's very amateur and it'll get better. But I was I was listening, obviously, I don't know if you heard last night's one that I released with Chris, Dave and Stevie Nicks. Yes, yeah, um, yeah. So I, I laughed all the way through that. I think I'm going to do one of them occasionally. You know, I, that, I, I wouldn't be able to do that every week. Um, it's just a group of lads getting together and slagging each other off, right? So more than anything. But um, it's got an awful lot of feedback. Like in it, we were we were mocking how many little views that the others have had and things like that. They, they've doubled the views of any other person so far and it's only wow. been op- it's only been on one night so um it that is obviously working and having that crack and having that banter is something that people want to hear as well so i'm definitely going to take heed of that you know um, yeah of course yeah but i was listening to it last night even and i just turned it on and the missus came in and she was like it sounds like I had the intro with me explaining what's going on then the new theme tune and then it going into the lads and the bit of music at the end and sarah was like sounds good mate and i was like you wouldn't think it was me up in that fucking bedroom <laughs> bluffing away as we are, would you? I was like, it actually does sound all right. I'm getting kind of... What do you think I'm doing in this bedroom? I'm doing this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh mate and i tell you like it I, i'm up in so i'm up in the baby's room right so the baby's bed's next to me here literally and i've managed to squeeze a desk in and and stuff for working from home and i'm using that as well to do the podcast as well you know but um yeah when i listened to it last night on spotify and i see it on itunes which is what i listen to me podcasts on or, or the apple podcast app i see it on that and i'm like yeah man it's getting so it sounds decent and then today i managed to link up um to about seven or eight different other podcast channels as such do you know where you can where you can kind of listen to it so um i'm just trying to find it here now like there's let me see there's many now so before it was literally spotify soundcloud and the podcast uh, apple podcast app but now breaker Castbox, overcast pocket casts radio republic like it's so pretty much it's available anywhere people can i'm just waiting for google podcasts to approve and we're off you know it's literally everywhere then so now even in the taglines and on social media and you're saying it's available here here, now available wherever you get your podcast it's it's going to be getting good so so that's good so yeah can i ask do you know for the youtube do you mind we we spoke about you know the swan photo um obviously the 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 royal seal of approval photo um and if there's any and the late como one do you mind on the youtube channel if i or the youtube thing if i put those photos yeah, up when we're I'll, talking about it yeah again I'll, uh, I'll send them over via uh email so that they're better quality because i've got this thing perfect. Around. and i know it's got your watermark on it and yeah. things like that but it'd be cool just to just to, again so when people are watching they can visualize what we're talking about yes yeah that's cool mate not a problem at all but yeah it's, uh, mate, it's been an absolute pleasure hope the family are well they are very well, mate. Uh, they're they're busy, but they're well. They're well, busy being bored. Do you know that way? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ditto, mate. Ditto. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, obviously keep in touch. Um, and again, hundred percent. Like I said, if if you need anything, just just give me a shout. I'm, I'm more than happy to help you out. Perfect. And if you find us, it over to isolatedape at gmail dot com. Cool. Simple as me. No problem. Legend. At all, Loved it. Thanks for your time today, mate. Right, Absolute mate. star. Stay safe. And uh, I only see you going on to bigger and better things, mate. So you're Formula One full time soon. I see it. Ditto. See it. Ditto, Leave mate. It. All right, mate. Take care, bro. See you soon, mate. Bye-bye, Bye-bye now. Bye.